Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles where today, yes, do not adjust your monitors that is a Gneiser now <laughs> uh, which is being sailed for us today by Morgs1999 I wonder if the 1999 is a reference to the year of his birth is he some kind of horrible millennial? he's clearly a hipster, he's sailing the Gneiser now <laughs> Definitely bucking the trend there. Damn it, I don't care if this ship isn't cool. I'm sailing it anyway. <laughs> Bloody hell, Jingles, come on. It's a bit early in the video to be giving the star of the show this much shit. Oh, it's fine, don't worry. We're past the first 30 seconds of the video. YouTube doesn't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, morgues. Um, in the Gneisen. You know, I do kind of feel sorry for Millennials, by the way. I realise it's my duty as a member of Generation X to give them shit at every available opportunity, but, well, I do belong to the generation that screwed the world up for them, so yeah, sorry about that. Right, anyway, the Gneisen now. I think my dislike of this ship is pretty well documented at this point, although I feel like I do need to set the record straight, because I do not think the Gneisen now is a bad ship. And you can quote me on that. I think it's actually a pretty good ship. The problem is that it's a pretty good ship with absolutely terrible guns. And given that World of Warships is, well, allegedly, certainly used to be, a game about ships shooting at other ships, having bad guns is a bit of a problem. And again, not all of the guns on the Gneiser now are bad. It does have some amazing secondaries. Well, amazing is probably too strong a word. The secondaries are pretty good. You don't really start getting ships with amazing secondaries, with the exception of HMS Agincourt at Tier 5, until you get to Tier 8. Ships like the Tirpitz, the Bismarck, the Massachusetts, for example. But like the Scharnhorst, also at Tier 7, the Gneiser now's secondaries are... they're not bad. So, bad main battery guns, and only has six of them as well. That's one of the reasons why I don't really like the Gneiser now. The other reason is because in the first couple of videos that I featured with this ship many, many years ago, Germany trolled me mercilessly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, Germans. You know what you did. And they say Germans don't have a sense of humour. What do they know? You see, in the first couple of videos where I featured this ship, I didn't really know how to pronounce the name. I thought, is that G silent? Is it called the Gneiser now? Or do you pronounce the G? Is it the Gneiser now? So I called it the Gneiser now. All of the Germans in the comments, like all of them, seriously, when, when the Germans start getting organised, that's when you have to worry, <laughs> okay? <laughs> all of them said, Nine Jingles, no, we don't pronounce the G. It's the Gneiser now. <laughs> so I fell for it, and in the very next Gneiser Now video, I called it the Gneiser Now. And then all of the Germans were like, seriously, come on, Jingles. We are Germans. We don't put letters into words and expect you to not use them. What do you think we are, French? <laughs> so, <laughs> fuck you, Germany. You got me once. <laughs> so, yeah, so my... My dislike of the Gneiser now can basically be attributed to two specific reasons. One, bad main battery guns. And two, Germans getting organised with a sense of humour. So. <laughs> but it's mostly about the bad main battery guns. The inaccuracy of these guns is legendary. Which is a shame, really, because everything else about this ship is really, really good. She is incredibly fast. She has great secondaries. Well, she has pretty good secondaries. Let's not get carried away. It's not a Turb, it's a Abysmark. Um, her AA isn't bad, although it, it's certainly not going to make a difference in this game, or any other game for that matter. She has torpedoes. And while her armour isn't amazing, because she's only tier 7, hang on a minute, did you just score a Citadel? Against... Against the Ismail? At that range? Wow. I'm sure it was just a fluke. And while her armour isn't amazing, because she's just tier 7 after all, it's pretty competitive for her tier. The only real downside is the extremely questionable accuracy and limited number of main battery 15-inch guns. I mean, the fact that it even has 15-inch guns, I suppose, is pretty good. Although it's armed with 15-inch guns at a tier where some other battleships start getting 16-inch guns. 
And there are other battleships, a whole tier lower, like the Warspite, the Queen Elizabeth, the Renown, that get 15-inch guns at tier 6. Accurate 15-inch guns at tier 6. And fair enough, the Tirpitz and the Bismarck also have 15-inch guns at tier 8, but they get more of them, and they are considerably more accurate. They do throw the Gneisenau now a bit of a bone. Wow, more hits. What's going on here? Um, yeah, they do throw the Gneisenau now a bit of a bone by at least giving it a faster reload. These guns fire every 26 seconds rather than the standard 30. Rear turret on the Vidyoni over there. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> wow, he scored a hit. What the hell's going on here? Um, but it doesn't... Wow, more hits. I was going to say, it doesn't really matter how fast your reload is, or what the caliber of your guns are, or how many guns you have, if you can't hit anything with them. But he's hitting things with them. What's going on? Morgs, you are aware you're in the Gneisen now, right? You're not supposed to be able to do this. More hits with the rear turret on the Bidjoni. Citadel on the Ismail. <laughs> oh, hang on. Here comes the fun police. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Russian carriers in a moment. For now, he's got some torpedoes to dodge. And the secondaries have opened up on the Bidjoni. Oh, I, I think. Is he going to get the shot? He's got the shot. Is it going to hit? Oh, that would be a yes. <laughs> okay. More hits, more Citadels. His first kill. Secondaries are now opening up on the Ismail, who's recovered some health after that bitch slapping that he just received. And the phone police are on their way back, so he's going to have to dodge some more torpedoes. Fortunately, it looks like they're coming in from ahead, which will make them easier to dodge. More shots out against the Ismail. More hits. The secondaries continue to work him over. Meanwhile, the Ismail, which is not known for having horrendously inaccurate guns, unloads all 12... <laughs> from a range of less than six kilometers and basically does nothing other than setting a fire. The uh, Serov dropped its torpedoes from way too far out and from directly ahead, so they were really easy to dodge. What are not going to be really easy to dodge, however, is that brace of torpedoes from the enemy submarine that just pinged him, and there goes almost all of his health. So that's kind of bad. As the fun police come in from ahead again, this time with the skip bombers, he uses the damage control to mitigate the torpedo homing, which is kind of like shutting the barn door after the horse has already bolted. Shots out at the Konigsberg at this range, even the Gneis now can't miss, and the only thing surprising about that was that the Konigsberg, as a tier 5 light cruiser that just ate a whole bunch of 15 inch armour piercing shells, didn't explode instantly, and is still alive. Oh, here comes a buy in. Another German ship armed with 15 inch guns. You need to be getting the hell out of here. Depth charge attack out against the submarine while he's spotted. Go, go, gadget secondaries nails the Konigsberg. Two kills, nearly 100,000 damage. He is not exactly problem free, however. You can see his AA guns opening up. That's because the fun police are coming back. And it's another torpedo drop from the Serov. He's on low health, he's burning, and there's a Bayern over there. Fortunately, he has two factors in his favour. One, the Bayern is completely ignoring him, and two, the Serov doesn't appear to be very good, which is fortunate, because generally speaking, Russian carrier players don't need to be any good. They need to be even less any good than regular carrier players. And as soon as there's a suitable break in the action, I'll explain why. Now, Morgz's problems are continuing to mount up here, not because the Bayern is a threat, he isn't, his guns are pointed elsewhere, and he's got some depth charges out against the enemy submarine again. But the fun police are coming back and he's just hit the map border. Now, thankfully, the Bayern isn't looking this way, so he should be able to pull the turn without getting pummeled by the Bayern's 15-inch guns. But, you hit the map border, you start slowing down, which means there should be no possible way that carrier can miss him. And yet. <laughs> Only eaten one torpedo? That was pretty good. I mean, there was no way he was going to dodge the ball. 
and now he's able to get the ship swung around. So even if the Bayern does realise that there's a Geneiser now over here that he could have killed a minute ago, he's able to angle his armour against him. It's like the Bayern just chewed on a submarine sea sausage. And of course the Geneiser now has sea sausages of its own. Only three per side, but that's three more than most battleships have. The fun police are coming back in again, and ordinarily you wouldn't want to turn and give broadside at this range to a battleship in order to dodge torpedoes. But again, the Bayern is paying no attention whatsoever. Oh, he's starting to swing his guns around now. But it's a day late and the dollar short because there's kill number three. And with the Bayern neutralised and the Serov now visible, this gives us plenty of opportunity to talk about why Soviet carriers are even worse than regular ones. And when I say worse, I mean for everybody who has to play against them. And yes, the Serov is steaming at full speed toward the enemy. I did tell you that this guy wasn't very good at playing carriers, but I'll explain why that doesn't matter, because he's in a Russian carrier. You see, back when Wargaming did the carrier rework and everybody rejoiced, at least until they started playing it, but they rejoiced because with the removal of the real-time strategy style carrier control, where the carrier player could control multiple squadrons at the same time and organise cross drops on you so that you stood zero chance of actually being able to avoid a carrier attack. With the news that carrier players were only going to control one squadron at a time, everybody rejoiced thinking that the days of getting cross dropped were over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if anti-aircraft fire actually did anything, and yes, that's kill number four, then that might have been true, but it doesn't. Even if you have good AA, at best it means that you'll only get hit by two of the three potential drops that the carrier can do on you. So the carriers were able to cross drop you anyway. Well, Wargaming heard all of the complaining and they did something about it by introducing Russian carriers. Russian carriers only get one drop per strike that they send. So they can't cross drop you from multiple angles. And this was good because it meant, in theory, that your anti-aircraft fire actually did something. Because if all of those aircraft coming at you are the only ones that the carrier is gonna throw at you in that drop, then the ones that you shoot down actually reduce the amount of damage that the carrier can do to you. And everybody rejoiced until they started playing them. <laughs> oh, oh, crack and unleashed. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Morgs, you do know you're in a Gneisen now, right? Well, anyway, of course, the Russian carriers were balanced around having a certain number of their aircraft shot down. So they're still doing the same amount of damage, regardless of how many aircraft you shoot down, because they're balanced around that happening. Which is fine, even though it really isn't, if you're in something that has decent AA and can shoot aircraft down. But if you're not in something that has decent AA and you cannot shoot aircraft down, it means that Russian carriers are going to mess your shit up to an even greater degree than regular carriers already do. And that's a particular problem with the Serov. I mean, it's a problem with all of the Russian carriers, but the Serov, being tier 6, is at the kind of level where it's going to face an awful lot of tier 5s and some tier 6s as well that basically don't have any AA. And I'm not exaggerating. I know that when people talk about carriers, they tend to get a bit passionate and prone to exaggeration, but I am not exaggerating. HMS Agincourt, for example, great secondaries, but it literally has zero anti-aircraft firepower in a game where carriers exist. Yes, really. <laughs> I am not making this up. This is a fact. And the Agincourt is not the only one. There are others, but, well, you know, this, this is fine, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's probably not just me. <sighs> oh, go, go, Gadget Minakazi. I think he was heading up to uh, grab that open cap at Delta. Oh, well, look at that torpedo dodge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be an episode of A Game of Throws. The Minakazi gets the final kill. You know what's most surprising about this? Not the fact that the Gnais now got five kills and a Kraken Unleashed and a High Caliber and numerous other rewards. I mean, yeah, that is surprising, but Morgs is a new player. 
he has less than 500 battles played. I think, I don't think he has anything higher than tier 7. And his win rate reflects that. He's still in the I'm recovering from being a complete and utter noob in my tier 1 to 4 battles. He has a sub 48% win rate. There's nothing wrong with that, less than 500 battles played. But he's got a 51% win rate in the Gneiser now. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> he's doing better. Well, he's probably doing better because he's starting to learn how to play the game. Now he's up here at tier 7 and he's been paying attention. But he's also doing better in one of the worst ships in the game. And that's pretty impressive. So I see a bright future ahead for young Morgs, if you can keep this up. Particularly if you can keep it up in a ship as dog shit as this. <laughs> so well done. And uh, I, I am happy to be able to show you a replay of Agonizer now. Not being absolutely terrible. And I hope you all enjoyed watching it, because that's it for today. Congratulations, Morgs. Everybody else, take care. Well, Morgs as well. Take care. Stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.